Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of genetic information, variation and relationships, and in particular, on evolution and natural selection. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson 5 of 8 in this tutorial, covering genetic diversity and adaptation. This is our fifth video in our series of 8 lessons on the tutorial DNA and genes. In the last lesson, we looked at the process of meiosis and how to calculate genetic diversity. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. First, we will look at the factors affecting genetic diversity, then at evolution and speciation, and finally at natural selection. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a read through them before we begin. First, we will define genetic diversity. Genetic diversity is the measure of the number of different alleles of a particular gene within a specific population. We can also call this the gene pool. Allele frequencies can be measured by sampling populations and characterising and counting the alleles of a particular gene. The allele with the highest frequency in the population with a normal function is referred to as the wild type allele. Now we will look at the principle of natural selection. Mutations resulting from changes to the base sequence of DNA or from chromosomal mutations can result in the generation of new alleles. Some alleles of a gene can be lethal, resulting in the death of an organism. Some alleles can be beneficial and passed on to their offspring. Crossing over during prophase 1 of meiosis results in the changing inheritance patterns of alleles, and sometimes even leads to new alleles being formed. Gene flow is when the members move into a new region, leading to breeding between different populations. Let's look at this example. If you added many British dogs to an environment of African dogs, the genetic diversity in the African population would rise, as shown here. Each individual has the same type of genes as another individual of the species. Members of a population of sexually reproducing organisms are not genetically identical. However, they have different alleles of each gene, making them genetically non-identical. In asexually re reproducing organisms, most members of a particular population of a specific species can be genetically identical. Since no meiosis occurs, genetic diversity in asexual organisms is driven by random mutations in the DNA base sequence. Now we will look at the principle of natural selection. Evolution refers to a change in the alleles in a population of species. The theory of evolution states that all organisms today evolved from a single common ancestor. For example, 
forest and desert animals originated from a common ancestor recently, whereas the forest and mountain animals originated from a common ancestor, but this was less recently. Natural selection is an increase in the number of beneficial alleles in a population, usually due to a selection pressure. When defining natural selection, it can be useful to give an example to make sure you get all the marks. We'll go through one together shortly. Speciation is the development of new and different species over time. This occurs because subpopulations of the same species can become genetically different. They adapt to their environments in different ways, eventually leading to new species. Now let's look at random mutations. There are three steps in the process of natural selection. Variation, selection and breeding. Variation exists within a species because individuals have different versions of the same genes, which are different alleles. Alleles of a particular gene can bring advantages or disadvantages to a particular individual within the species. For example, in mountain rams, one male can have an allele which gives them long horns, and one male can have an allele which gives it short horns. Survival of the fittest is the idea that an individual has traits which allow it to effectively survive and compete for resources. If the individual is unfit, then they will not be able to successfully mate and produce offspring. Mountain rams with large horns are able to successfully defend themselves and compete with other males for food and water, as well as for female rams. Males with short horns are unable to do so. As such, males with short horns either die or live without being able to successfully mate. For example, if there is an attack by a wolf, the longhorn ram is more likely to survive. Favourable genes and alleles will accumulate in a population over a set period of time, which can be measured by counting the change in allele frequency. As we can see here, over time, more and more of the rams are getting longer horns, which is known as evolution. Next, we will cover how natural selection makes a species better adapted to its environment. Here are some key tips on natural selection. First, a selection pressure is required. Natural selection relies on there being a selection pressure. If there's unlimited food, it doesn't matter if some individuals are better at hunting. There is only a limited selection pressure. A beneficial characteristic can often arise due to a mutation, which then spreads due to natural selection. Natural selection and evolution happen over several generations. Using the phrasing over several generations, the allele frequency increases. There is always a mark in the mark scheme for emphasising that natural selection happens over a long period of time. Natural selection can lead to the formation of a new species if there is a split in the population. For example, geographical isolation could separate two populations of monkeys over two islands. A mutation in one of the monkeys can improve the ability to clip trees and reach foods. This mutation spreads by a natural selection to the other monkeys on the same island. There is a reproductive barrier, which is the river, between both populations, which means that the mutation doesn't spread to the other monkeys. Over time, the two populations become so different they can no longer breed together, 
and two different species have been formed. Speciation is technically not in this section, but is instead in the A2 section. It's useful to learn it here, as it helps us to understand natural selection fully. Finally, we will look at directional selection. In directional selection, the alleles of an extreme type are selected for. For example, bacteria gaining antibiotic resistance. A few of the bacteria can have resistance. Most of the population will be resistant against antibiotics. But a few will have alleles giving them resistance. A selection pressure will be applied. When antibiotics are given, a selection pressure will be applied and the alleles giving antibiotic resistance will be selected for. The resistance alleles will be the ones that we select. These are more likely to survive and pass on their alleles to the next generation. The bacteria will evolve to become resistant. Over many generations, the bacteria will evolve to become resistant. In directional selection, the alleles of an extreme type are selected for. We've just seen the example involving bacteria here. Here's a graph that shows directional selection. The curve has been shifted to the right. In stabilising selection, the alleles of the mean or the middle range are selected for. This happens when the environment is stable and the genetic diversity in a population decreases. For example, human birth weight undergoes stabilising selection. Human birth weight can vary. The weight of a baby will always vary, but most babies have a weight in the middle range. A normal birth weight is beneficial. Having too small or larger birth weight can make it difficult to survive. Natural selection keeps the birth weight in the middle range. It will stabilise the birth weights. This graph shows stabilising selection, where the pressure has been selected against both extremes. We've now completed all the specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you are unsure about. We've now completed Lesson 5. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.